Have you ever hugged a beautiful white cloud? No? You should try hugging one of these baby afghans. Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Today is learning how to make this pipsqueak blanket. This is like cuddling a cloud. It is extremely soft. Use three balls of this nice uh, big ball of Bernat pipsqueak. You can use different colors. I decided to go with a solid blue, a variegated blue and then a white to accent it. Now it is absolutely impossible to teach how to crochet using this yarn. I would not describe this afghan as somebody that is just new to crochet because you do need to feel where the stitches are and if you're familiar with crochet you're basically your fingers will do the walking where your stitches are going to go into. Now this afghan too because it is a pipsqueak even if you're off by something maybe you just happen to catch the wrong thing in here it doesn't really matter too much because it's nice and fluffy. I don't recommend you do it all the time of course but if you're gonna get wrong the first time make sure you're wrong all the time. So this is a great uh, project to start with. This does not take any time at all and this is a great uh, baby yarn to work with and it's a lot of fun too and it works up pr pretty quickly. Of course if you need some free instructions I have them for you. Go to the more information of this link. I'll provide that to you. If you are using pipsqueak today use a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today and then it has all the information that you want to do. Now this blanket changes color every other line. So it's gonna go one, two and then we're gonna change color. Three, four, change the color. Five, six, change the color and then we're gonna go back to the first color. So it makes it really easy. So I am going to use the Bernat Super Value today. I'm gonna use a size six uh, millimeter size J hook for that and and it's impossible to teach you how to crochet with pipsqueak. So I'm gonna use some great yarn and baby colors that to inspire you even further. And of course change the colors to match whatever is in mind. So let's begin. Just grab your yarn. I'm using a six millimeter size J. Now everything is in sets of four when we're working on this pipsqueak afghan together. Makes it really easy to follow along. So we're gonna go one, two, three and four and then one, two, three and four and one, two, three and four. If you're following the afghan please go to 101 but if you want to change the size of it just go in force and stop wherever you want. So one, two, three and four. I'm gonna do it one more time. One, two, three and four and once you get to the end you're going to chain one. If you're doing the afghan of, uh, of 101 please do 101 but if you're gonna do it like this make sure you just add one after you're doing your groups of four. Let's begin the next row. Let's begin to work across the chain. Now you're gonna count back one, two, three and four and you're going to double crochet into the four. Now you're going to be working with pipsqueak if you're deciding to use that material and basically you're just gonna go into any, any of the stitch that you can get a hold of. It's hard to see those stitches when it becomes furry like it is. So you're just gonna crochet forth from the hook and then into the next one. So all of these double crochets work in sets of three just like so. And then we chain one which is your fourth like what we did. So this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you have your three double crochets in chain one which equals four. We're now going to skip one chain on the chain, well <laughs> one chain and go to the next and we're gonna double crochet for the next three. And we're gonna continue to do the same configuration going all the way across the chain of just putting three double crochets in a row followed by a chain one which I just did and then we skip one and then we double crochet back down onto that chain for another three. So that's easy right? So in the pip squeak this is I think one of the hardest parts of the entire afghan itself establishing that first um, row just like we're doing right now but it's worth the work and, and it is possible I did it and crocheters basically just have to use their fingertips to feel where those stitches are if you cannot physically see them as well. Okay and so we're gonna when you get to the other side you're going to chain one and you should have the enough stitches left over and if in the pip squeak if you're off by one stitch just throw something extra in there. If you are got one too many just undo the, the strand and just um, you know just take out that last um, extra chain if there is one. And that's kind of cheating but I would do that instead of frogging and having to retry over and over and over. So what you have here is that three groups of uh, or groups of three of the double crochets followed with the chain in the middle. Let's begin and move up to row number two. 
row number two is so stinking easy it's not even it's not even funny really. So what we're going to do is that we're just gonna simply chain three which counts as a double crochet and we're simply just going to match exactly what you see. So we're just gonna double crochet into the next one and we're gonna double crochet into the next. Okay. And then see how we're skipping one down here? Row number two, we're gonna chain one to skip it again and then we just immediately double crochet into the double crochet. In pip squeak, this is actually pretty easy. It's just that first uh, getting on that first chain is really tough. But just use your fingers and just see where things go. Okay, so chain one and then we just keep doing that all the way across. We're going to change color at the end of this row. So we ba basically are doing two rows of every color before switching for the entire afghan. And we're gonna be doing that at the very end and I'm almost there. So just one double crochet into each and just match exactly what we see. So the game plan changes then in round no row number three as we just change the orientation a bit. So we're gonna chain one and then the final three. How you're going to change color is really simple at the very end. Okay. We want to go into that final chain space and we wanna pull through, pull through two and hold and wait right here. Do not go any further. I want you to change your yarn first and you'll be doing this with Pipsqueak as well. To change color what we wanna do is I'm gonna create a slip knot. This is technically not the right way to do it uh, but I prefer my project not fall apart. So I, I do a slip knot first and then I'm gonna pull through the final two like that. And so now I've trimmed off my blue yarn already and so now I'm just gonna turn my work and I'm going to just like this. I'm just gonna get ready and I want to use the yarn tails then to hide my work or to hide those yarn tails into the next part of this project. So that's how you would change your yarn if you're going to do so. So let's uh, begin to do row number three. Row number three is very similar to doing a lark's foot stitch. So you're gonna learn to do that within this stitch. So we're gonna chain up th four. So one, two, three and four and you're thinking to yourself, okay wait a minute Mikey. You just chained up four and normally we've been doing three. This counts as one double crochet and a chain. What we're going to be doing in this round or in this row is that this space that's here we're going to be changing it so it's in the middle of these three sections instead of right where it is here. So that double crochet chain one will then expand us so that we're gonna do the next stitch right into that last one of the three right in the beginning. I'm just uh, looking for the yarn where it's coming from so I want my stragglers and I want those on top of the line and we're simply gonna come to the third one. So you got one, two and three, third one and double crochet. So what we're doing is that we're still doing groups of three but the groups of three are now going to be here in the middle and here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do an ex uh, uh, twice long double crochet and instead of double crocheting into this gapping space we're gonna come down into around here. So we're just going to wrap and then insert the hook under from underneath and pop it out and then grab the yarn and what I want you to do is pull up Okay, don't just start it there. Just pull up like that, pull through the two and then finish with the two. And I'm gonna show that again. So our next stitch then is that we're going to come into the next double crochet that's available to you. Okay, so we just did that space and now it's the next double crochet. We're going to chain one and then we're simply just going to skip this middle one here and then go to the last one on the other side of it. So the group of three we're just skipping those middles. We're going to do a twice long double crochet. We're gonna wrap coming down into this line here. Come from the bottom up, pull up, give it a bit of slack, pull through two and two. If you don't give it the slack that's gonna compress on itself and it's not gonna look good. So let's uh, double crochet the next one and now we're in the middle of the three. So now we're gonna chain one and go to the other side of the three. Okay, we got the twice long double crochet like so. Give it some slack. If you don't give it enough slack you'll be in trouble. See how, see how that's pulling up? I never gave it enough slack and that's because there's tension coming from my yarn ball so I'm just gonna reach off camera. Just pull, it's a brand new ball so it's got a little bit of tension right in the beginning so I wanna try that again. So wrap and I'm gonna leave this in the tutorial because I think if you don't see that happening you're gonna think okay 
Mikey's uh, crazy. So we got pulling up, pull through two and two. You will get the feel of doing that. Okay, so just trust in yourself. Okay, so I double crochet in the next one, chain one, go to the next one over which is the third and then twice long again. So down, around. Now the twice long doesn't happen every time we're doing green. So the way that the pattern is is that this twice long only happens on certain rows. And so you're not gonna be doing this every row of course. So we're gonna double crochet the next one and we're coming to the end so we're gonna chain one and then we're double crocheting into the final stitch which is the chain itself like this. And we leave on the green and we simply just turn around. So this is what it looks like at this point. Okay, so let's begin to do the next part. Let's just turn our work and now this row is about matching what is in the green. So see how the blues match each other? Every time you have a color, the second time you do the same color, it just matches the new um, row that you've established underneath. So this time we're gonna chain four, one, two, three, four, because that is your double crochet, chain one, because you have a space now. And now we're just gonna double crochet into the next double crochet. We're not gonna go down and do any twice long stuff. We're just gonna simply double crochet every time you see a double crochet. And when you see a gap, you chain one. So I've got a gap so I just chained one and then just go into the next three. It's easy to remember this stitch. Everything is in threes. Just like so. So chain one and then coming into the next stitch. So with the baby pip squeak, the afghan grows pretty quickly because it's nice thick and bulky yarn and it's nice and lightweight too. Chain one and just continuing to double crochet into each one. And then remember that on the edge here, we have chain one and we're just gonna go into the third chain. So one, two, three. And now what we're gonna do is not finish this stitch. We're just gonna leave it at two because we're ready for another color. So I'm gonna introduce another color next. So let's begin the next row and I'm just gonna start a slip knot and begin. Now you may want to use a darning needle to hide in these loose ends as well. That's probably a better way to go just so that you're aware of that. So I'm just, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna grab my loose ends which is the green and the pink and I'm gonna use these here. So now the row number five is about shifting the gapping space back to where the blue is. See how the blue is over here and in the green we shift it over. In this row what we're gonna do is shift it back so it looks like the blue again. So we just immediately only crochet three, or chain three. And we double crochet into the gapping space directly itself. Make sure you get those stragglers loose ends and then you double crochet into the next one. So this time what we're going to do is that we're going to skip over the middle one of the group of three. Okay, so we're gonna chain one first, skip the middle one, go to the last one of the group of three and then double crochet right into the gapping space of the next one and what we're doing is we're moving over the spaces. You know these colors are absolutely amazing. This would be, even in this yarn would be amazing as a baby blanket. What a fluke that is. So here we go. Um, I'm just trying to establish here. So we chain one and we're just making our three. Like so. Now you'll notice on there, on this afghan is that it will not, um, we don't go down every color as far as this long extension because these long extensions only exist on one side of the afghan. So we, if we do it on the next one, we're gonna be backwards and the extension is going, gonna go down the other side instead. You could always play with your imagination and do that if you wish. It's like a lark's foot um, if you decide to do that but that's creativity, that's up to you. So you can make do with whatever you want. So that's how you get across that line. And so now we've shifted that pink to look like in the same sections as the blue. Let's begin to turn our work. We're gonna go row number six. Row six is so easy because we're just gonna maintain exactly what we see. We're not gonna go down because there's, do you see how it, we had to go two rows down? Well if there's no two rows down in this project for this. So every time we do this, this lark's foot that appears here is that it's a color change and it's coming down to the second layer. So I basically, I could not do that at this time because I'm gonna run into stuff. So it just, uh, hopefully that makes sense to you. So what we're gonna do is just chain three 
and then we're just gonna match exactly what you see. So the next one is a double crochet and the next one is a double crochet. Okay, chain one and then we double crochet into the next double crochet. We skip that and keep that gapping space because it's that gapping space that we're gonna use in the next row because we're already starting to do the repeat pattern in the next row um, is what we're gonna start doing the lark's foot again. So we're just gonna double crochet in each. So there's another afghan I have coming up in the future where almost every line is the lark's foot. This is not like that. This has it only occasionally and it has a really, you know, I think it's a nice touch. It's not overdoing it and it looks really great as a baby afghan. So remember when we finish, we're not gonna finish the entire stitch. Okay, we're gonna make sure that you get right to the end gonna go right into the chain and we just want to stop one before and then we're gonna reintroduce. Now the blue has not had a lark's foot so that's gonna be our next lark's foot coming up and then what's gonna happen is that we're gonna go back to green. Green is gonna look just like this, no lark's foot and then when we come back to the pink that'll be lark's foot. But you're going to repeat the pattern just constantly now 